the St Cuthbert stream valley and Swallet are about two kilometres to the east of Priddy in the heart of High Mendip. The stream's catchment has pasture, marsh, forest and ponds that collect and store rainwater. They release water into the stream slowly. The Cuthbert stream and the natural depression of the Swallet can hardly be seen from a distance. From above, the existence beneath of Mendip's second longest and most complex cave system is almost unimaginable. The discovery and custody of St Cuthbert's Swallet has been largely tied to the Bristol Exploration Club, which has its headquarters at the Belfry right next to the cave. Many BEC members would consider that they are more tied to the Hunter's Lodge Inn. BEC has a long history and has always been renowned for its sober membership <laughs> and for the odd characteristic of going to lots of places and leaving a trail of small black bat stickers. The club maintains facilities so close to the cave entrance that very early morning caving trips can be undertaken without an excessively debilitating walk. lead extraction began in Roman times, but evidence of any early activity at St Cuthbert's was obscured by 19th century mine waste reprocessing. The valley was clearly a hive of industry. And this has had impacts and a legacy on the cave in several unusual ways. It provided very early proof of the water link to Wookie in the famous lead pollution legal conflict. Wookie Hole paper mill, who needed pure water, won an injunction against the lead works at St Cuthbert's, who were discharging contaminated water into the sinks. Some of this lead can still be found in the sediments that are in the cave stream passage. An important knock-on from this case is that the injunction is still in force and underpins the Caver Conservation and Access Agreement between the paper mill owners and the BEC. The Cuthbert's leadership system, based on conservation, was the first of its kind in the UK. Another impact of the now overgrown mining landscape is that it stores rainwater, making flooding in the cave slow to start but last much longer. In 1921, Herbert Balch, the founder of Mendip Caving, identified the cave potential with furtive diggings at Plantation Swallet. He made no underground finds. But until 1953, digging had only revealed tight rifts below a rock face a few metres south of the current shaft. In July of that year, the top of the entrance shaft was reached. And so exploration of the majority of the main passages and chambers began. It was a wooden shaft, the original mm. one, and then you had a you came through into the top of the entrance rift. Yeah. The trouble with Cuthbert's was the original entrance rift was so tight there was only a handful of people who could get down it initially. The legacy left by the initial discoverers is one of the best preserved caves of any found in Britain in the mid-20th century. Mm -hmm. 